Hello, I'm Jason Gorber. Uh, we're here at BestBuy.ca's YouTube channel. We're taking a look at the Pioneer VSX935 receiver. This is uh, potentially the home of uh, your home theater setup. Um, I think that this is a really capable unit, um, well within the budget of most people that are looking to uh, build up a system. Uh, moving away probably from the uh, soundbar solution, the sort of all-in-one solution, and actually looking to build a multi-speaker home theater setup that really does... Um, uh, give the biggest bang for your buck, as it were. Um, Pioneer has been um, at the forefront of uh, much of this technology for many, many years. They have sort of a, uh, two levels of uh, their sort of consumer uh, level. This is sort of the highest end of the consumer level, and then they get into their elite level, which uh, has a lot of the technology actually trickles down from the elite. So the difference between the 935 and some of the elite models um, for most people um, uh, who, are, who are building a system sort of within this range aren't necessarily necessary. Um, sure, there's a little bit more fit and finish, but I think that this is an extremely capable uh, unit with um, really fantastic capabilities built in. So um, as you can see, uh, it's not the lightest um, unit, but it's also certainly not the heaviest. Um, it has, um, there's, there's some labels on the top here, shows HDMI, Wi-Fi, but the big thing um, for people uh, like us that are worried about such things is that it has a full capability of Dolby Atmos decoding and DTSX, which means that you're going above and beyond the sort of regular surround sound, the 5.1 that we're used to, the front, center, left, and rear, or 7.1, front, left, center, sides, and rear, and the 0.1 or 0.2 being the subwoofers. Um, this actually allows essentially height channels like you see in theaters these days and, and many capable theaters. And so with Atmos and DTSX, you truly are getting this immersive surround environment if you have the capability to actually run that on the system. Um, as you can see, the front has a really nice um, uh, wide display, big, uh, fat, chunky, um, uh, volume and uh, input uh, selectors. It's extremely easy to set up. It has um, a really well laid out uh, menu system. I'm used to a, um, a different model that seems that they haven't updated their graphics uh, in decades, whereas this definitely feels modern. As soon as you plug it in, the screen itself looks uh, quite uh, almost like a video game console, really nice images. And it's extremely simple for you to select um, the different uh, speaker allocations, whether or not you're going for, let's say, a 5.2.4 system, which is, is or, or whatever you choose to do. Um, I know the numbers get a little bit confusing, but it's essentially deciding about how you're laying out the things that are at ear level and how you're laying out the speakers that, that are above you. And there's many, many options that you can do. Either have those speaker options being sort of directly above or slightly above and slightly behind you and above or um, directly center or um, uh, height above the uh, center channels. There's many, many different options depending on the, on the sound setup that you actually have. Um, if I am uh, able to do this around back, without too much drama, you can see that the, uh, the back has a nice, um, uh, they're, they're, they're plastic, but they're nonetheless uh, nice and um, uh, secure uh, speaker posts. You cannot put spades on. Anybody who has spade connectors, they look sort of like forks. They do not work with here, but banana plugs do work uh, nicely. You just simply uh, twist them tight and insert the banana. Or, of course, bare wire will, of course, will work. You have a bunch of HDMI inputs here, of course. You can see the Wi-Fi antennas sort of poking up. It does have Ethernet, which is definitely a preferred option if you can wired. Remember, everything that you wire makes everything else on your Wi-Fi network work better. It's one of those things. The more you can actually uh, have it work out that way, it's always better to wire. Um, and if, uh, again, um, no massive fan here on the back, I mean, it's just basically all passive cooling. Some RCA inputs for those that want, uh, including a phono input. So there is a moving magnet phono input uh, on here for those that have uh, turntables that are not moving coil that require a separate kind of amplification. It has um, a coax and a toss linking for those that want uh, digital input. And other than that, it's, it's exactly as robust you want. You have three HDMI inputs that are capable of passing through 
full 8K video. I mean, we're, we're not there yet for the vast majority of people, but what it means is that your highest end game console or whatever you have, this is reasonably feature proof to at least pass through those signals without any interference and actually working through that. Then you have three other inputs that are only sort of high end 4K compatible, more than enough for the vast, vast majority of users. And it will last you many years to come. The way that the, um, the, the speaker poles sort of work back, um, again, you have the front, the center, the surround, and then you have this, um, the height, um, the assignable two channel height uh, speaker lines, but you also have, you do have a, a multi-zone, you have a zone two. So you can, for example, have this be your surround set up and then have another set of um, speaker lines that take whatever the input that you're selecting for your, your multi-zone and actually have that run. So for example, let's say this is in your living room or your home theater, you can actually have say outdoor speakers or kitchen speakers or something like that run off of zone tune and actually have amplification built in. It does not unfortunately have a couple of things that I would have really liked on the back. And I'm gonna flip it around one more time without too much damage here. So first of all, on what, what do you get when you sort of go up a little bit in the model? Well, the power cable is actually sort of um, uh, sort of fused in. It's nice sometimes to actually have one of those IEC, like a computer style power cable. Whether or not you're going third party power cable is a whole nother level of crazy. But nonetheless, just to have a replaceable power cable is is quite nice. And, and one thing it doesn't do, which I would have loved for it to have had, is it's got all these wonderful RCA uh, inputs. Uh, it doesn't have any um, uh, multi-channel RCA outputs. Now, there wouldn't be a lot of room. It's not really designed as a preprocessor, but that would be fantastic for future-proofing for your ability to actually use this sort of as the brain of a system. And then as you uh, maybe get different amplification as your speaker needs uh, increase, you could actually then on a multi-channel basis actually have things output. That's not what this is designed for. You have to look at another model. So it's not really a criticism. It's just, it's nice. It's got such a great brain in it. I would love to use it, not just for its built-in amplification, but for additional amplification. That would have been a nice way for me to actually see um, it, it, it go. Similarly, the remote control um, is fine. It's this little plastic remote control. It's not exactly premium, but it does what you want it to do with um, all the little rubberized buttons. Uh, there's some onsets. It turns on, turns off, and does the volume and has all the elements that are there for you. With this type of processor, you can do things like take stereo signals and, you know, uh, make them into whatever surround you want. I'm not always a big fan of that. I sort of like being able to bypass that stuff. And it is nice that it's relatively easy through the remote to actually bypass that and get the actual native signal. Um, sound wise, it's good. Uh, amplification isn't super, super hot, especially you have really uh, power starved speakers, but again, for you sort of know what your what sort of the scope is that you're looking for. You're not gonna be driving um, massive, uh, you know, four ohm, um, incredibly high impedance speakers with uh, these, this. That's not what this is designed for. This is designed for reasonably easy to drive speakers that are creating a very convincing surround sound environment with decent sound. Um, uh, the way that it actually uh, behaves is is quite satisfactory. It does have um, a, a bunch of additional sort of streaming capabilities. It, for example, on Spotify, I can actually go on Spotify and actually choose this as a device using um, the, the connected Wi-Fi. Therefore, I don't have to be within Bluetooth proximity, which I'm a huge, huge fan of. What I was extremely surprised about is while this can connect with Bluetooth, when I switch back and forth between Bluetooth Spotify and the sort of built-in Spotify, the built-in Spotify was significantly better sounding. I believe what it is is that Bluetooth has limitations. This isn't like the highest end implementation of Bluetooth using some of its lossless codecs. So the built-in digital analog uh, processing um, on the unit is substantially better than what it receives on, on Bluetooth. It does mean if you're a Tidal user or one of the other users, it's not quite as um, easy to set up. But for Spotify, it sounded significantly better when I was using the sort of built-in Spotify navigation. I could change tracks very easily with the remote as well as I could with a phone. And again, since it's on Wi-Fi, it could be anywhere in the house, even controlling zone two, and actually do that. So um, overall, I'm I'm a fan of the VSX 935. I think it's, an, it's a really, good sort of sweet spot receiver. It's not, it's something that actually has all the capabilities in terms of its amplification and drive. Um, certainly uh, 
it's, it's much better than a beginner amp, as it were, or a begin, be, beginner receiver. It sort of sits right at that middle stage uh, really nicely. Um, it's reasonably priced. It has good features for its capability. And again, by sitting at that sort of top end of the consumer line of of uh, Pioneer before you get into the sort of mo more elite line, I think that it's the closest you come to some of those um, more uh, sort of exorbitant or uh, powerful features with it, within the unit, which um, still remains extremely cost effective. It drives uh, more than enough speakers that most people have. And again, the sound from this that you're going to get even from, let's say, some old speakers you have kicking around, um, given the fact that you can do stuff with spacing, placement, and all that stuff, is actually going to be a, better than almost any soundbar uh, system that you're actually going to get, simply by the nature of the type of surround you're going to get. You're not going to get the sort of artificial surround of like sort of faking from one bar um, or even a couple speakers. If you can actually get a proper sort of 7 or 10 or 12 speaker setup based on uh, what we're actually doing with these this kind of setup, be it this receiver or another one, you're truly going to get a more immersive sound environment, which is fantastic. It does allow you, obviously, um, uh, to drive uh, two subwoofers, which is nice. It actually has two RCA outs for a subwoofer. So if you decide to go to like a 5.2 uh, point um, uh, four um, setup, whatever it is that you're going to do, um, you ha you have the capabilities uh, of doing that. Um, for those that are uh, unaware about why you would want two subwoofers, um, it, it has to do with um, actual room nodes. And sometimes you can actually get a much um, more appropriate sound uh, setup. It does have um, uh, uh, sound uh, room correction software built in. You put in a microphone, you go through the very easy to use uh, calibration setup, and it does a nice job. Again, I find often uh, with room calibration, it's great for a movie soundtrack, but for music, I always um, turn it off. And again, the, way, the ability to disengage it uh, really works for me, but it was nice. It was painless, much quicker than what I'm used to. It's not the highest end Dirac, which you have on their uh, big models, um, but it is certainly sufficient for this and will actually tune your system, get your speaker levels up and right, and again, extremely easy to use. So I think this is an extremely uh, capable uh, unit. The VSX 935 should definitely be on your shopping list. Um, it is, uh, you know, well designed. Um, will fit in nicely in your system. It's not so big and obnoxious um, that uh, it takes up all the room, but it certainly will be a beautiful sort of centerpiece, a home to any uh, home theater, and allow you to build up as you sort of accumulate more and more equipment in your setup. Um, that's it. Uh, I'm Jason Gorber. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel. Um, send us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you have uh, experience with this model or any other questions, we'd be happy to address them. And we will see you next video. All the best. Take care.